In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do a Tunisian a fair isle cowl. Isn't this incredible? Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial we're going to explore doing the fair oil concept with Tunisian. Yes, this is Tunisian. So even if you do not know how to knit but you know how to do a crochet hook with Tunisian, you can do this particular pattern. This is the Cat's Meow. This was amazing and I did my test trials just to be able to test myself to see how good I could be able to do it. I'll look at mine. So mine is actually a slightly different pattern but I realized what I needed to do in order to create this concept. So let's go over a little bit of the concepts now. To do the fair isle concept you actually have to learn how to carry your yarn. So this is going to be one of those Tunisian tutorials where you have to carry the yarn for where it doesn't appear. So you see this color here it disappears behind and then it comes magically back out. Let's turn over the sample. So I haven't trimmed any of my yarns in the back because I want to see how it's working. So you can see when I turn it around it looks like when I turn it around that this pink is missing right in the spot. So let me just point. See? So the pink is actually in behind all of this. So it appears here and then it's carried. So when we go to carry this yarn we're going to uh, pick it up on the one side and then and then just kind of follow the pattern and then come back when to, when we do the return pass and pick it up once again and bring it back. So let me reveal what the inside of this looks like and the model was wearing this in the photograph and basically you can see how the yarns are carrying across. So that's not a really hard concept. This cowl is actually one particular strip and you need an ex uh, a Tunisian afghan hook that allows you to be able to do that. So get all of this onto one and then at the very end you just have to sew it along the edge just like there. Okay? So you can kind of see that from the inside perspective. So if you can see that really cool concept it's really neat. So the fair isle here it is is that we're going to start off and we're going to immediately start doing this pattern right from the very beginning. And what's going to happen is that at the end of the tutorial you have to just go along the edge and look these are just double crochets coming in and then just sewn very carefully into position so that you do not see the, the marks in behind. You can kind of if I pull it apart you can kind of see the carrying string across and that's where everything is sewn together. So you have to do the same concept for the top to do the border just like so. And so that helps it from not rolling. This is a really really cool cowl. So let's uh, grab our crochet hook. You need to know how to do the knit stitch with uh, Tunisian. I have other tutorials available on that but I'm going to be using an extra thick yarn today. The Bernat Roving because it's easier to see this kind of concept with larger yarn and a hook to begin. The pattern will be, be provided to you and you can refer to the link of the more information of this video in order to get that. Now in the pattern that is provided to you you can see everything is there. There's some diagrams. You will notice that there is a color key chart right here and the repeat pattern is this four stitch repeat. So basically from this solid black to this solid black is that this is the repeat pattern that you have to do over and over. It says to start here. You should know that there's an extra buffer right here in the first part and on this side. Okay? So you have to just pay attention to that because I was thinking to myself when I started doing it that I was off by one stitch. There's, see how you got two stitches that are actually um, the same height. So these two white are the same height coming down. That does not appear any more into this pattern until you get to the other side. Okay? So basically this repeat is just four stitches repeating over and over and over. So when I did this here, look at this. This is the Karen Party yarn. And I did it with there. You can kind of see that you can see the four stitches. So one, two, three, and four, and then we're back down again. So one, two, three, and four, and then down. So the outside has actually two, has one layer by itself and one layer by itself. So it does not actually follow the repeat pattern on both edges. Hopefully that makes sense for you, but look at this. So you can see that it has a natural roll to it. It will be doing that to you with, throughout this tutorial and then at the end you just have to throw in the edging. Just refer to the pattern and then just add a double crochet layers around the top 
uh, piece and the bottom and that will relax the roll and get this to be able to sit nicely. I totally want to do this in a larger size that's available as something that I could wear. If you are substituting from the hook size and from the yarn that's recommended in the pattern just look at the ball band and we're uh, looking at says six millimeter six and a half millimeter size K. Remember with Tunisian you have to increase your hook sizes almost about two hook sizes. In my case I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter size N in order for to demonstrate this for you today. So enough chitter chatter let's get going. So here we go. Let's create a slip knot and this has a repeat pattern of four stitches but we have a buffer of one stitch on either side of the cowl from uh, all the way across. So we have to make sure that we keep in multiples of four and then we add two at the very end. So let's begin. Remember the one on the hook does not count as one and you just have to look in the instructions. So if you want to do the cowl you have to make sure that you can get that many stitches onto your hook. So it says chain 105. This here is way too small. So you need one with an extension cord to it so that you can slide it even further. You'll be surprised how uh, wide this is when I, you have to do the whole circumference. Today I'm just going to be working on a small tutorial sample. So this is, it doesn't count as one that's already on there. So one, two, three and four. Okay so there's one multiple. One, two, three and four and then one, two, three and four. So keep it in sets of four if you want to change sizes or just follow the instructions on the pattern. At the very end you just have to add two. So one and two. And there is the beginning chain that we're going to start off with today. So we're not ready for the knit stitch yet in order to do the fair eye. We have to still get started. So we're going to look back and go one and go second chain from the hook. Turn it around and get the back loop only of the chain and just pick up the yarn and go through. And we want to continue to grab these so you'll be working all the way down your cowl doing the same concept. I'm just working your way all the way down. Notice that we're still only using one color. We're not going to be ready to introduce the next colors yet. The next rows we're going to be knitting. It's going to be a Tunisian knit for the entire cowl but we have to get started first. So you're going to want to keep pushing these down further down the shaft and eventually your hand probably will be working over top of this of uh, the stitches that you are working with as well because it's going to be working um, probably down your hook and down the extension cord that's provided with your Tunisian hook. So I got my last one in here now and so whenever I'm on the edge and I'm coming back I'm always going to do the same thing regardless if it's knit or crochet or, or uh, doing what I'm doing right now. So we're going to uh, yarn over and pull through one loop and then yarn over and pull through two and continue to yarn over pull through two. I use this hand here to kind of pull it off of the hook but also I do a little bit of motion where I pull the hook backward with the other hand as well. And I'm going all the way back. So in the next row we're going to actually start the knit of the Tunisian knit version and it's really simple. Let me show you how to do that. So let's start the Tunisian knit. So in the last few tutorials that we've been doing in the Learning Tunisian series is that we've always been doing the front loop like this and we, that's called the simple stitch. This time we want to still go through that but we want to go in diagonally to the back of the project. So there's always, see these two strings here? So see one and two, one is on the front, one's on the back. You're going between that Okay so that's the front one there going between it and directly back out to the uh, other side of the project. Yarn over and pull through and collect. And this is going to turn the stitches sideways. So you work down your way just going in diagonally through the back of your project. Okay you need to make sure you get in between those two strings of the, on the front and the back side. So right directly in between. Don't go into a space, a gapping space. So just kind of go in. The first one is always a little more harder to see than the rest uh, than the other rows that we're going to be doing because once you turn it it becomes very really obvious. We did do a slower video uh, in this Tunisian series on the introduction of doing Tunisian knit and, and if this doesn't make sense to you just kindly refer to that. I would not describe this project for beginners at all. So in the, at the very end you're coming to the the two there's a chain space right there. They'll have two strings that appears. Yarn over and pull through that one as well. 
and let's go all the way back to the start. So we yarn over and pull through one loop and then yarn over and pull through two. And when we get all the way back I'm gonna do one more layer of this again and then I'm going to start the fair aisle as far as doing the yarn uh, color changes. So let's go one more time. So again we're gonna restart and then just a knit. So it's Tunisian knit for the remainder of this tutorial. So just in, okay, back to the other side, yarn over and you can see that the stitches are kind of, see how it's kind of right in front of your face? Just in, diagonally and through. And the Tunisian knit makes it really nice and tight and that's why it's so fabulous. Okay, so I'm going all the way back across and then of course don't forget that one on the edge. Okay, it's got two, appears to have two strings and then yarn over, pull through one loop and then yarn over and pull through two. And we're coming all the way back. So you can see that my Tunisian is now starting to look like it's knit which is why it's called the Tunisian knit. <laughs> it's not rocket science folks. So let's come all the way back and we're going to begin the pattern as you see in the stitch key next. And that's what it looks like. So here's the stitch key just like so and we're gonna be starting off. I have like put pencil there to scribble it out. That's my buffer and then the next um, the next spaces are going to be working out pretty good. So when we uh, go across we're gonna notice that we're gonna hit a burgundy at some point and then we're gonna start repeating the pattern. So the repeat pattern is every four stitches and we're just gonna kinda follow that off camera. So I'm going to uh, begin the next one here and let's get our next color ready first. So let's follow the stitch key. In the stitch key the first one is the same color that we already have. Okay, so you don't have to do anything with it. That is your buffer. So the next three are still going to be green as per the stitch key. So we're gonna knit stitch the next three like so. But the next one after this is going to be burgundy. So what I want to do is that I wanna grab my burgundy. I wanna leave a large loop like this. I don't wanna do a, st um, a slip knot. Slip knots sometimes get through to the front and it's very obvious. So what I wanna do is that I wanna go into the next one as a knit stitch but this time I want to pull the, the burgundy through instead of the green and leave the green in behind. Okay so I'm gonna let the straggler just fall out. I'm gonna let the burgundy stay in the back and I'm gonna get the green ready in my hands once again. So the next three are going to be green again. So one, two and three and so the next one is burgundy. So I stick my hook in I get the green out of my way, switch it to the, the burgundy and I don't apply any tension. I'm not pulling it tight. It's just carrying in behind and then I insert into the next three for just green. So I just switch out my yarns like so. Okay and then the next one basically I can go to burgundy again. So you just can just do these patterns all day long. Okay, so the very last one is just green. So the burgundy only appears every third or every fourth time. Okay, so to come back we're gonna do the return pass. We have to match the colors that are already there. So we're gonna start off with the green first. So we pull through a loop, just one loop only. So the next one here is through the two. Do you see how that this one is the second one over? We wanna drop this green and grab the burgundy to do that. To do those two. Okay, that carries the burgundy across and then switch it back out for the green for the next three. So one, two and three. And do you see the next two? The burgundy is the second color. We switch out our colors again. Bring the burgundy through. and then pick up the green for the next three. One, two, three. Okay, you see burgundy is the second one in. So let's switch out. Okay, and we only just do it for that one time. We only do it for one time because there's only one stitch in there and then the remainder is green. 
Okay, so we've just got one stitch in there so far of the burgundies going down in like so and now we're ready to do another pass. So if you look at the stitch key you'll notice that burgundy is up for a second time in the same exact same stitch. So what we have to do is that we have to follow exactly what we just did again using the same color. So we start off with green for the first three. And just see how I'm starting. Okay, the burgundy is next as per the stitch diagram. So I just switch out the burgundy in my hands, insert into the burgundy, still doing the knit stitch, but I grab the burgundy on the other side and pull up. So that keeps the stitches in alignment and then I go for the next three green. So in behind you can get your stitches all trapped. This is a, a carrying one. It doesn't matter where those appear. The stitches will kind of go around each other and it won't be much of a difference. Okay, so the next three are green. Getting used to the string manipulation is the toughest part. So okay, so the next one is burgundy. So we're gonna switch off to burgundy next. and pull through and then the next three are green. One, two and three. Okay, the next one is a burgundy. So I'm just getting burgundy ready in my hands. I find after time I can actually manipulate these strings a lot faster when I just get kind of used to it. And then the last one is a green. Okay, so let's do a return pass on this. So the first one is yarn over, bring through one loop only. Now the burgundy is the second one in, therefore we need the burgundy back out just to pull through that section only and switch it off again with the green for the next three. So one, two, and three. You can see the burgundy is the second one in and we want the burgundy back out for that one only and then the green is for the next three. Switching it off to burgundy just for one and then switching back to the green for the final. So we're gonna look at the stitch diagram key next because the pattern is gonna change and what's gonna happen is that the burgundy is then gonna start to be three wide and the green is gonna start to diminish away. Now what I didn't point out to you is that at the very last time that we need to actually get the burgundy ready for the next uh, row. So instead of going all the way back I want you to stop one short and bring this burgundy out and just pull it through the last one because this uh, loop here is always the next row highest. So we're now gonna go into the second stitch over and it's gonna be burgundy. So if you look at the color key, the first two are burgundy and then green is the next. So we're gonna insert into the next, drop the burgundy and get the green up and now we're gonna switch back to burgundy again. So go into the next stitch and get the burgundy and that one happens to be as per the diagram, three in a row. So we go into the first one, we go into the other burgundy that's already there, that's number two and we go into the next one which is number three. Okay, so we're now the next one is a green so we insert in, we switch out the colors to green and then the next three burg are gonna be burgundy again. So just going into the next one, switch off your yarn Okay, drop it. The next one is gonna be green. And then the next three are going to be burgundy. So switch that off. Keeping your yarn organized is the biggest obstacle with this whole idea. Okay, so that's what it looks like at this point. So like we did before we have to carry the colors as per what you can already see in the return pass. So yarn over and pull through the first one with the burgundy because that's the colors that we want. Yarn over pull through with the burgundy again and yarn over it and pull through the burgundy. So you can see in the second one is the green one. So we're going to drop the burgundy at this point, bring up the green 
and the second one is now burgundy again. So let's switch off our yarns and do the rest of the burgundies. So we're always looking for that second one in. So the second one is green. Pulling it through and then the second one that you see here is burgundy. So we're gonna switch that back. So the next one is burgundy and burgundy. The next one is going to be green. And the next last two are going to be burgundy each. I have this worked out and it's just the way I'm sitting but I have this worked out that I can actually hold both of those yarns in my hands and just grab one or the other. So there is what this pattern looks like so far. So when I go to look at the stitch diagram key I can see that I'm done green all together in this section and so I'm just gonna trim my green at this point and pull it out of the way and until I get back to the color I'm not gonna worry about it again. Just leave it out of the way. I just find that there's so much string going on sometimes that it's just easier to cut it. So if you notice this stitch diagram it's burgundy all the way across. So we're just gonna knit stitch in every stitch with burgundy going all the way across. So this is the best row of them all as far as I'm concerned. It's the easiest one. You don't have to manipulate anything but you need to do all the manipulation stuff in order to get the, the stitching look. I have to say once this did this I did a um, I want to do a little cup cozy and stuff. I've always loved knitting. I just uh, I just struggle at it and this makes it very doable for me. Once you're over there just yarn over for the first one and then come back all the way for the burgundy. And I can tell I have to come back all burgundy because it's all burgundy on the hooks. There's no other color changes. So in the next pass we're gonna start introducing the next color and um, in my case it'll be gray but I wanna show you some tips before I do that. So coming back and you can kinda see now it's really starting to take effect. Now before I introduce the gray, the gray appears, see how the, the burgundy come down by two stitches? The burgundy appears in that same row coming back up. So it's just easy to be able to follow this pattern because you just look for what's already established there. So let's uh, get my gray all ready. Okay, gray is all coming in from the other side. That's perfect. And what I want to do is that I want to start off and I'm looking for where this is dipping down in order to follow the pattern. So I can see that I need to knit stitch across until I get to that, that spot. So I have my four in there. Okay, and so I, if I follow it up, see that's the next stitch that's available to me. I'm gonna go in behind and then I'm just gonna pull up a large loop and pull that through to start my gray. And so afterward what I wanna do is I wanna secure that with sewing it in in a more permanent basis on the other side. Or sorry, when we're getting this all completely done. So now we're gonna pull up the burgundy again and continue along. So the gray only appears that one time and I'm looking for where it appears again. Oh look it's the next one which is the fourth one over. So it's in. I'm gonna switch out my yarn to the gray and then it's back to burgundy once again. Okay looking following it up the next one is gray. See that? Isn't that cool? And then the last one is burgundy. So we yarn over to go backward, yarn over, pull through one. The second color is gray in so I wanna switch out the gray to the gray I should say. And then switch back to burgundy. One, two, three. Okay the second one is gray so therefore I have to switch it and then the next ones are burgundy. So by matching the color in behind like I'm doing it allows you to carry the colors backward to the other side to allow you to reset. Okay and then it's burgundy all the rest of the way. So you can see now that I've started to add in the burgundy color as we go. So let's go back again. So we're just gonna start off with knit, uh, knit stitch again just following exactly what I already see because in this uh, one this is the second one of the two that dipped down. So when I get into the gray I wanna pull the gray. 
Okay, see how that is showing like that? Don't want that. So I wanna see how I'm gonna get rid of that. So I wanna be a little conscientious. Okay, it's doing it again. I wanna leave this in the video because you may, that might happen to you. And I don't want to see that in there. There we go. Okay, and the next one is the burgundy. So you wanna keep your strings as organized as possible. Next one's burgundy. Okay, and the next one is gray. So we're gonna switch out the gray again. The next one's a burgundy. Next one is gray. So there's not a lot of thinking power once you get the pattern established and then the final one is burgundy. Okay, so let's come back. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through one. The second color is burgundy. So let's switch that out and do burgundy through there. Whoops, just one. And then pull burgundy through the next three. One, two, and three. Okay, the second one in is gray. I'm gonna pay attention to that. The filmy dust is not the easiest to manipulate yarn on. I'm not gonna deny that to you. So if I'm making it look harder than it, uh, harder, it's not really harder. It's just uh, my positioning of bodies. Um, I like to keep my yarn balls organized to my one side and being on a desk like it is, is not always the easiest. Okay, dropping yarn, pulling it through. Okay. So let's go back in the other direction. We want to start off again and continuing the pattern. So when I did this one again, I did the same error that I did with the green. I wanna back up one, look at the diagram and realizing that we need to start off with gray on this side first. So I just wanna pull the gray as my final. So we're gonna start off with the first one is being gray. The next one is going to be burgundy. Okay, the next one is going to be gray. Actually the next three are going to be gray. Gray, and then gray, and gray. Okay, the next one is burgundy. So just pick it up. The next one is gray. And gray. and gray. Okay, the next one is burgundy. So let's get my burgundy up. Okay, and the next three are gonna be gray. One, two, and then the final. Okay, so there you go. See how the pattern's working out? So let's uh, go back, so we're gonna yarn over one so I can see the second color is, is, is still gray, so it's gonna be gray, gray. The next one is burgundy. Okay, the next one is gray. So this, um, the burgundy is pretty much done after we get over to the other side. We still have to carry it across, even though you're thinking oh, it's already done. It appears behind the other burgundy, so it keeps it a nice solid looking color. Okay, the next one is burgundy because it's the second one in. So the key for the fair isle is just to bring the yarn and carrying it without any tension in behind. So it's kind of loose but it's not too loose that you're gonna catch on it. So now the burgundy is done and I'm just going to trim it off with a nice long loop so I can sew it in afterward. And here's what it looks like in behind. So you can see that the yarns are carrying across. These are the starting yarns that we had that we have to deal with afterward. But you can see it's actually looking pretty good. 
So again let's just quickly review. This is the repeat pattern and you already know how to do this but this one is a solid gray across like you did with the burgundy. So every few lines you have a nice break of yarn manipulation not having to worry about it and just continue to knit all the way across just with one color. So it's not very hard. Um, the, the rolling up kind of gets on your nerves a little bit um, but once you get to a certain point the roll is gonna uh, calm down and then you don't have to worry about it either. So just get everything in behind. And then just yarn over the first one, two and go all the way back. So back is always your nice break on the whole deal. And see? And that's what it looks like with thicker yarn using the ferrule concept. And uh, it's actually really, really nice. So once you throw on your border, you're just gonna do your double crochets around the top and the bottom and then this will stabilize and then stay open. You know what? I would almost consider doing this in this wool kind of yarn, the Bernat Roving instead. Um, it's really, really thick and um, it probably really keep you warm over the winter. So I guess that's it for now. Until my, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. Stay tuned for more free patterns and ideas coming up real soon. Until then, we'll see ya.